Hi there, Matt. How you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, good. It's really good of you to do this for us today. Uh, Stuart Island Discs. So that's our very special take on the Desert Island Discs phenomenon. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Have you been to Stuart Island? It. You know what? Well, I'm embarrassed to say that I haven't, considering that I live, used to live relatively far south uh, down in Dunedin. And I was meaning to get there, uh, and I do intend to. I, a friend of mine played in Stuart Island last year, and he said it was really good, so I'm going to one day. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy gigging there. It'd be uh, quite, quite, quite special, definitely u- unique. So today, you've, mm-hmm. you've cho- it's going to be um, a great surprise to hear what you've chosen. But first of all, I know you've just been playing a few gigs. Can you talk us through uh, the last few weeks in your life <laughs> in, uh, in New Zealand yeah. touring around? I can, I can. Um, so I flew over here and uh, I started playing some shows. I think my first one was in Dunedin, where I'm from, which was a wonderful show there at a venue called Dog with Two Tails. And it's hard to know the climate in terms of how people are feeling, you know, with whether it's the, you know, COVID stuff, recession. And I know that it's dampened a lot of people's uh, desires and spirits to go out. Uh, plus, we've had some difficult weather, like what we saw in Nelson. But mm. I was really shocked that the shows were full and sold out. I was really enthused and, and, and just heart warming to see all these people come out to shows. Uh, and so we had a great show in Dunedin. We played a place called Ofer, which, which I'm guessing you know. Oh, yeah. But uh, a lot of people don't know Ofer in central Otago. Um, and we played a town hall there and I played Gore. And I've sort of traipsed around a little bit. Uh, now I'm in Wellington today. And uh, I'm sitting in a cafe called Fidel's. Oh, nice and, uh, place. Just sitting out, yeah, just sitting outside uh, with the awning and uh, watching the rain come down. But uh, <laughs> I play here tonight. I play yeah. here tonight in Wellington. All right. What's yeah. the venue tonight? Well, tonight's an interesting one. So I was chatting with my, with my friends here, and they recommended a place called Hilltop House Concerts. Mm. And it's an it's interesting phenomenon with, with uh, musicians sometimes tending to play what is known as house concerts if a place has a good enough, you know, uh, ability to put on enough seats and, and, and bring in a PA system. So I'm playing a kind of a, a special show in that respect. I mean, all the details are online, obviously. It's not mm. private in that not the public can't come. Mm. But I thought I'd give that a go this time in Wellington, try something new, uh, and, uh, and then... To, and then on the weekend, uh, Sunday, I'm at the wine cellar in Auckland, so back to a sort of normal venue. But today, yeah, Hilltop Private House Concerts. Right. And I hear it's pretty cool, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a crack. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, do you know if there are tickets left for that? I think there are. Uh, I'd have to check online because the tickets, it's a bit different to my usual under-the-radar tickets, although I think you can go via under-the-radar, but uh, they sort of go via the, the, uh, the person putting on the show. Her name's Anna, so yeah. Give her a call, give her an email. The details are either via my website, via Under the Radar, searching Matt Joe Gow, and we'll squeeze you in. I think Auckland's getting pretty close to sold out, but, yes. you know, get on there. Yeah. yeah get, get into it. Well, I think we should get um, talk about, introduce now, your very first song that you've chosen for this segment today. Did you have trouble uh, honing it down to five? I did, mm. which is why, like, do you have the five in front of you? Because I listed them. I don't have that list currently in front of them, in front of me. Uh, but I sent them off and I did have trouble organizing the five because I was kind of like, are these my favorite songs? Are these the most influenced songs? Hi, Matt. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I sorry. could hear you the whole time. Oh, that's did it cut out, did it? so weird. Yeah, cut out, but, but you're there. That's great. I, I'm sorry to cut you off midstream. So, um, so that's we were discuss- your first song is Dylan. Right, yeah. right. And if I think of it, Dylan... See, the problem is with Dylan, he's got so many songs, but I think I know what song we went with there, and uh, I think it was uh, it's a Blood on the Track, Shelter from the Storm, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Paul is playing yeah. out of Wellington today, and uh, he's he's got the track. But, I mean, how do you choose a Dylan song? <laughs> it's so hard. Exactly, exactly. Well, this one in particular, we went with because... I went with because I just felt... It encompasses his amazing songwriting in terms of lyricism. Each, each lyric, each verse is just would be the best verse that you've ever written as a songwriter. And 
it just blows my mind every time I hear it. So it's probably from my favourite Dylan album, Two Blood on the Track. All right, well, let's take this uh, song right now. Uh, we're talking to Matt Joe Gow and his first pick, Bob Dylan. Ah, just great to hear that song again. And that was the choice of Matt Joe Gow, a musician who's currently touring and playing in Wellington tonight at the Hilltop Private House concerts. And uh, what a choice. I do, I do love that track. It's great. Yeah, when, when you hear it again, you're always reminded of how, how amazing it is. And it, uh, it always takes me back. It's timeless. Oh, I can imagine. Because, I mean, you, you're you a great performer to see live. I, I loved what, when I saw you uh, and, and you oh, were fo- focusing on your Break, Rattle and Roll uh, release, mm-hmm. an award-winning album uh, in Alexandra the, a couple of years ago now, wasn't it, or a year or so yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, really nice style um, and obviously influenced by that mm-hmm. sort of, that you've got that real country feel, but... but but it's also very alternative as well, your music, Matt Joe, isn't it? It's it's um it's a whole yeah. mix, mix of feels, really. Yeah, you've got it. You've got it right there in terms of like what I listen to. It's kind of mixed, and uh, Dylan plays a huge role, and like he does for for many artists. But ultimately, you know, other things uh, bleed in, especially on that Break Rattle and Roll album. So uh, there'll be there'll be elements of rock in there and folk, country, which is I guess where the Americana term comes from. So uh, an amalgamation of of sort of traditional American music. So uh, Bob is, is a blueprint, but there's, there's lots of other things. And obviously, you being a musician yourself, you can hear that. Well, yeah, 100%. And it's interesting because your next song by, is by the Black Crows. And, mm-hmm, of course, mm-hmm. quite a rocky edge and a, and a brilliant yeah. track. Tell us why you chose yeah. She Talks to Angels. Well, um, I found my list that I sent you, so it's good. And I saw that one was coming up, and I thought, oh, this is wonderful. That was the point for me when I was a little kid that I realized that bands were influenced by the, by the bands that were in my mother's music collection. So when I was a really little kid, like five, six, seven, she would have the Stones on, for instance, Exile on Main Street and, and all their, their hits. And Black Crows are one of the first bands I realized that were heavily influenced by those bands. Like they're, they're kind of like the Stones on steroids sometimes, right? Like they're a little bit louder mm. and a little bit uh, rockier, perhaps. That's right. Um, and I made that connection and thought, wait a minute, these young guys are playing this music that appeals to me. It's like, you know, when I was 12, I remember seeing uh, the Robinson brothers and, and Rich Robinson on guitar. He was wearing a cowboy hat in the video for Remedy. And he had like this all red suit on and he's playing, I think he's playing like a, a 335 Gibson. I thought, he looks like the coolest guy in the world. I got to do that. <laughs> and uh, their, their first record, uh, She Talks to Angels, I think was, the second biggest track on it, but it appealed to me more because it has that bittersweet sentiment that is so often found in country music, like the Dylan song you heard. It's such a beautiful song. So it's a, it's a rock band doing almost a soul Americana uh, old country song. So for me, it, it speaks to me the most with the, the acoustic opener, and uh, it's just wonderful. Yeah, I really like the song. So let's take it right now, The Black Crows. Oh, his voice is so good and broken, isn't it, in that particular track? Mm. Mm. He's got a great voice, Chris Robinson. Yeah. Still does, actually. Still still sounds good. Like, I think he must be 60. Still sounds great. Mm, that's right. And, you know, it's not dissimilar to the style that you're so good at yourself, uh, really. You know, I want to talk to you a bit about growing up, uh, Matt, because, uh-huh. I mean, you, you, you know, I know that, were you born in... Auckland then moved to Dunedin, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so Yeah, yeah. I was born in Auckland but only lived there for about a year and then uh moved down south to near Wellington and then at about ten I moved down to Dunedin. Okay. And of course, you know, that is the birthplace of so many fantastic bands mm-hmm. and artists, isn't it? Do you think that influenced mm-hmm. you a lot? Massively. Uh, people often ask me that because of the flying nun movement and mm. the the label and the bands that came out of their straight jacket sets, Chills the Lanes. Uh, and they say, like, oh, what, is your music influenced by them? And sonically, I think that's not an obvious thing to pick up, obviously, with the style I play. However, I realized that when I started playing music somewhat professionally at the age of 13, we, we were only able to do that because of those bands having forged this uh, amazing uh, uh, sonic movement from all the bands coming from there. So all the, all the venues existed, the awareness of live music, the concept that it was normal to be in a band. We would rehearse in the middle of the octagon underground, this place called Ruby in the Dust, 
And we just went into that cafe one day and we went down to the owner and I said, hey, can my band rehearse down there? A bunch of 14-year-old kids. And he was oh, like, yeah, cool. Fantastic. And I don't think that would have happened if there wasn't such a culture there that was created by those bands. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it meant that I could become a, a musician. You know, I could practice and I would play and tour with the, with the adult bands there and they would just allow us to go open up for them. So it was, it was a really important place for me to grow up and I think it gave me the, the idea that it, it, you could do this, perhaps, you know. Yeah, and, and that, I guess, was just the beginning. That was the, the spark that lit the flame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it just, it, I just love playing on stage. I love playing with a band. And uh, so, yeah, I started pretty young. Uh, and it just, it just went from there, went from there. Yeah, and, and so how long have you actually been based in Australia? Just over a, a decade, probably like six, 12 years now. I mean, yeah. I moved there, immediately started playing on the scene in Melbourne, and we very quickly brought my first album out uh, in in Melbourne on a on a large label there called Mushroom Liberation, uh, and that was sort of the start of it in terms of my uh, recording career. Yeah, and you've never looked back, and and you've you know you've got a lot of critical acclaim, and it's not. I mean, let's face it, it's not that easy <laughs> to um to do what you've achieved yeah. in a way, is it? To to go over there, well, and make it. You work. know how. You know how hard it is to be a musician in general, uh, and I'm not trying to uh, poor me or anything like that, but any time I meet a musician, I, there's, there's a respect there because we know that it's not an easy game no matter what genre you play. Uh, but at the time, I guess stubbornly, I was playing alternative country, Americana, whatever you want to call it, and there was a burgeoning scene there. Um, there were a lot of Western shirts in Melbourne at the time, and uh, we were one of the bands to be doing it. And I think that the label took a gamble on us and thought, oh, okay, this is kind of cool music. And they gave us uh, some money to record an album. We got to meet wonderful artists, very successful ones, like Jim from Midnight Oil played on my record. And oh, Bill great. Chambers, a well-known country yeah. musician over there, played on my record. And Nash Chambers produced it. So we got to hang about with people at the upper echelon of the industry. And I thought, okay, well, we're rubbing shoulders with them, so... Maybe we, we're onto something. Let's keep going. Uh, and and from there, we've learned a lot and gone on to produce my own records. And as you said, it's not easy. But as long as you're true to yourself and the music you play, then uh, then you have that strength and conviction to keep going. Mm. A Dead Leaves, a great band. What what what's happening with them and you at the moment? Like when you go back, what are your plans for the well, spring? Well, they were over. Yeah, they were over here playing with me for uh, a few shows. Uh, I had a couple of them over. So it's wonderful to have that, be able to play solo as Matt Joe Gow or be able to play as Matt Joe Gow and the Dead Leaves if we want to do the full band show for festivals or, or just a change. So I sort of mix between the two. Uh, in Wellington tonight, I'm solo. In Auckland, I'm solo. But the South Island shows happen to have, have the, the Dead Leaves the with me. Band. And when I get back to Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah so people can, you get to play different songs uh, with the band that you might not play solo and vice versa. Mm. Uh, and they're wonderful musicians that are, that are with me on all the records. Uh, we have our own studio space now, and I can bring them into play. A lot of them are, are so good, they play with a couple bands. Uh, mm. But, you know, we, we just put the date aside, and we get in the studio and record together. And we've got that relationship now for over a decade, and it's wonderful to, to get back with my brothers and sisters and play the song. And that's great because, you know, to have that, that depth of experience with each other and you've been together such a long time that mm. you know what each other wants and out of each, each show, it's, it must be a great feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's just, we were playing the other day and it's, you just look over, they're just your friends. Um, and I know that a lot of them wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for the friendship that we have uh, because it is, you know, it is a tiring job can be tough you're away from family or friends you're on the road sometimes uh but i think it's that energy at the shows and the camaraderie that we have that that makes it all the worthwhile and now we've added that dimension in with our own studio and mm. recording and producing our own records yeah uh, so it makes good. it even more more fulfilling in that in that respect too oh i can imagine that's just a dream come true for, for an artist in a band isn't it to, to have your own place to make the sounds yeah you want. Yeah, we kind of built the knowledge and the equipment up over the decade uh, and eventually put it to work uh, in the studio, uh, mainly courtesy of my guitarist, co-producer. He was at the helm of it and it's his baby, uh, but 
uh, we co-produced the records together and uh, we sort of learnt along the way and I've sort of studied music the whole time uh, in terms of production and, and uh, we started off with the Seven Years record, my second record and have gone on from there to produce Break, Rail and Roll and now producing other artists as well. It's, that's pretty fantastic and uh, you know, like I say, yeah. if, if anyone hasn't yeah. heard Break, Rail and Roll, uh, check it out, it's, it's really cool. So let's go, to our, let's go to our next song which is yep. oh, Gillian Welsh. Good call. It's funny. Yeah. I was just talking about this woman this week because um, she's pretty special, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. For me, it's um, you know, it's it's not to try and introduce a female because there's many amazing females in the mix. But when I think of Americana and I think of like the, that's the first name that comes up for me as a as as a female artist um, or as an artist in general. She just she's amazing. Her and Dave make the greatest team. Her album Revelator is just phenomenal. For me, this this song in particular reminds me of Neil Young, and that's really what spoke to me. It sort of harks back to to those '60s records from Young, and my mother's massive Neil Young was a massive Neil Young fan, and this one just meanders. And I'm sorry that I, cho- I chose another like seven minute song. Okay, I think this is the last seven minute one I picked, but <laughs> yeah. it just builds slowly. It's wonderful. The fiddle, it's so raw. Uh, her voice is amazing, and it's, it's just a great... It's one of my favourite songs to just put on and just cruise to. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Wrecking Ball. Fantastic. Great Friday song. This is Wrecking Ball, uh, choice of Macho Gower. Here we go. Oh, isn't she great? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's great. The whole, the whole production's great. I love it. That fiddle. Amazing. Mm, so, so good. Uh, someone described Gillian Welsh to me as, like, great hangover music. <laughs> Yeah, it is that. It is that. I mean, that's, that's uh, she's, uh, she's so much more, obviously, but you know what I mean. It's just a very calm. It's just kind of kind of lovely to listen to. Sit back and chill. It is. But what I love about it is it's it's calm and it's lovely, but it does have such an edge. You know, like that song is really rock and roll. You know, it's really raw, um, as well as being chilled. I know that sort of sounds like a bit of a juxtaposition, but uh, I think when you listen, people will get it. It's like calm and chill but also raw and edgy oh very much so yeah I, I think that's true and i think that's what comes through in your music is is it something that you set about to do or is it just something that's in your heart and your soul when you're actually performing and it just comes out that way i think a bit of both i think if we were ever to listen back and stuff was too therapy or too slick we would probably probably try to fix it but that's kind of what is best about this type of music you know like you're never going to I, I don't even have the production capabilities to make a song as slick as some of the stuff that appears yeah. on certain radio stations or mainstream music. So why would I try to? You know, I have these great musicians and we can just put some mics up and play and make it sound like a live band. I guess our, our idea is to make it sound like the band actually sound rather than, rather than try to make it sound like something else. Mm. Sometimes I hear the drums and they don't even sound like drums anymore and that may be what people are going for, but for me, I like the sound of these instruments, so I try to make, I try to record them as honestly as I can. I think on my new record coming out soon, that's probably the most honest expression. Uh, we just put mics up. We haven't even really used much reverb or anything, and yeah, that for me is, is key. So I think if it comes across as raw or honest, it's probably just because it is at loggerheads with so much overproduced music these days. So mm. what, what people might be hearing is raw is really just what instruments actually sound like. <laughs> oh, I think you made well, a really good point there, actually. Yeah. Because if you hear a drum kit, you know, it sounds like a drum kit. Sometimes you hear some bands, you're like, it doesn't even sound like a drum kit. It's like some, yeah. like, what is that snare? It's just so compressed. So yeah. I don't know. For me, like, that's cool. Do what you want. But uh, like, why don't we just get it? sounding like it sounds like it sounds yeah. make these instruments sound mm. real yeah like you're in the room right mm. yeah. which which adds to the intimacy for the for the listener like so you know so actually you better tell us the name of the new album have you got one is it is it far off being released? yeah yeah it's in the works called between tonight and tomorrow that'll be out later in the year currently a couple of singles on that people can find them all over you know whatever digital platforms a song called till my whole heart bursts I brought out a couple of weeks ago. Before that, a song called Sweet Collapse. And um, the record would be out now, but it's been delayed with, you know, the way the world is. So that should be out later in the year between tonight and tomorrow. Between tonight and tomorrow. Nice title. Mm. <laughs> Isn't it? Thanks. Yeah. That's well, it's about that 
that time, you know, that comes to everybody. Most people late at night, sort of, it always ends up being sort of between tonight and tomorrow where you're sort of on your own and, and you're confronted with whatever it is that, uh, that, that maybe ails you or, or confronts you and about trying to get through those moments. I think that was at the heart of the record and that is the title track and that's what the name of the album is. Yeah, it's a great title. Okay, very good. Right, let's move on to the next track. Mm -hmm. This is a mystery mm. to me. Okay, so the Biloxi cool. has Golden Messenger. What an interesting yeah. name. Well, I wanted to go with some stuff that maybe some of your listeners may not have heard before. His Golden Messenger, I came across him. We were reviewed in the same magazine, and I like to look at the other artists who, who are being reviewed alongside me. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I'll check this guy out. was blown away. I think he adheres to a lot of the production techniques we just talked about. His music just sounds like he's playing right in front of you in the room, has a great energy to it. I think he's doing wonderful things with the Americana genre. He's got a great soulful almost bluesy voice over country music, which is exactly what I think of as Americana. I think this song opens his album, Heart Like a Levy, and it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And for your listeners, I think it's only two and a half minutes, so we haven't given you an eight-minute song this time. <laughs> oh, so maybe we should talk a wee bit more. So tell me wh where he's from. Uh, he's, he's an American artist. Uh, I, think he is, I think he's on the West Coast. I could be wrong about that. Um, the main... No. Uh, singer-songwriter is called MC Taylor and uh, his band have been together for I think about four or five years now I think they're on to about their fourth uh, he, he's quite prolific he brings out a lot of albums oh yeah uh, here we and go I think, right and um, yeah yeah and uh, I think they are um, and they were even Grammy nominated last year so they really started to blow up and I think if someone wants to hear what's happening in, in the alternative country Americana genre and, and, a, and a band who are really doing it well mm. of the last few years and then this band are doing it really well. But they've been, they've been going for a while, by the looks. Yeah, yeah, maybe they've been going for a while. He's been going for a long time. Yeah. In different guises. Okay. And I think it really connected with people as this, as this band. It really started to connect with people. Um, they're still relatively underground compared to some acts, but... Uh, they're um they're starting to sell out real, pretty big big spaces and I think they almost came out to Australia. I had a ticket to a show, but as we know, the world changed. So hopefully, he comes back. Oh, absolutely! Well, I'm intrigued. So let's take this track now. The choice of Matt Joe Gow, and it's called Biloxi. Yeah, pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, it's got a great energy, uh, nice upbeat song, and just wonderful sounding acoustic. And mm. I love his voice. So yeah, yeah, super cool band to to watch out for. To watch out for, and I think you will be educating a few people, or certainly me, <laughs> as well, and some of the listeners. You know, that's yeah, that's a wonderful thing, right? And I, it's the same with me when I tune into to radio stations wherever I'm at, and 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 listen to a show like this and I get educated too. So I think that's, that's a really cool thing. I think it's great to be open to other things because so often we're not, are we, in terms of music? Yeah, yeah. You've got to keep that open mind, which can be hard sometimes when you may be pretty down on the state of music. But I think if you've got those trusted friends or colleagues around you where you know, you know, you know they've got that good taste and they've, and they've, they've come to you with whether they said, hey, check out this band, War on Drugs, or like, hey, check out this band, mm. uh, Bon Iver, back on like in 2010, and you're just like, okay, this is my trusted friends. And when they tell you something's good, you pretty much know it. And so I have a few of those people around me, and that's a good way to, uh, to get music. Mm. And then you can get it instantly now on your phone, right? For well, anyone who wants to check me out or anyone, you can just type uh, me into Spotify, and it comes up. So it's so cool that you can instantly you know, check out what your friend was, was talking about. Oh, I, th I totally think so. And, and it, it, you know, sometimes it's hard to just go sort of searching, uh, you know, because you're, you're looking for something to inspire you. But it's just normally from mm. other people, isn't it? It's just like they'll, they'll put on, you'll be with a mate and they'll put something on and you're like, how come I haven't heard this before? It's, it's a great feeling. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes it may not resonate with you quite at that moment, as much and then maybe a little bit down the track you might hear it you know it might be synced to a television show or someone else may play it and then suddenly you're like ah i get it now you know you're in the right space for it now 
Um, yeah. There's, there's a couple of bands like that in the past. Or maybe you get into them on the next record when your friend introduced them on the last record. But, That's you know, true. yeah, like I said, hopefully if someone gets onto His Golden Messenger or gets onto whether it's a, a Matt Joe Gow album of mine or whoever it is, like if you can introduce someone to some new music, that's always a cool thing. It's funny, you know, because uh, I was, I've been looking up his golden messenger. Because not his, it's his. <laughs> and uh, yes, that's right. His, yeah. yeah. One of the descriptions is neo psychedelic country, <laughs> which I really like. I love it. I love it. And you know, yeah, me, my friends and I will just call it HGM because it's so long. So we'll just be like, you know, on that HGM track, there's this production or that production, and um, and so it because it's such a long title, but it, it is kind of I sort of see it as. Um, yeah, it's got a real gospel element uh, to some of the songs, and some of it does get a bit psychedelic. Uh, but you know, ultimately for me, it's just that really good raw production where it just sounds that just sounds like a band. And then I've seen them uh, live in terms of I've seen them on uh, whether it's YouTube, and they just sound like uh, they sound like those recordings. Yeah, which is which is the key. Which is also yeah. nice. I've got to paint a picture for listeners. So Matt Jogo is sitting in, in a cafe in Wellington watching the rain fall, mm-hmm. <laughs> waiting to play, right. play tonight. Um, yeah, has, has Australia had a bit of a wet time of it as well, like we have? It has. You know, I mean, obviously, I guess people seen on the news, New South Wales, Wales flooded for the I don't know how many times. Uh, it's just... Yeah, it's, Depressing. It's difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult out there, which is why music is so important. Uh, I think it's a, it's an opportunity for people to come together, whether it's in a social environment or whether you're just tuning into something like this and you can feel that part of the community. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I think that's what it's for. Uh, and I think that at a time like this, it's actually as important as ever for, for things like art and and music to help keep people's spirits up because, yeah, God, the news can be depressing. Yeah. I don't blame people for wanting to turn it off. I mean, Melbourne uh, Melbourne yeah. must be such a great place to be based. I was just thinking because, you know, you, you venture out at night, there's tons of culture and the city just reeks, you know, music and arts and doesn't it, and theatre. Are, are you finding it scratching yeah. every itch? You're very happy based there? I mean, I definitely, in terms of uh, in terms of the music industry, it's wonderful. We did suffer through being locked down. I think we were the most locked down city in the world, embarrassingly. Yeah, true. Uh, so we really suffered that. We suffered that in terms of musicians got locked down, couldn't use a studio, couldn't play shows. I came out, we came out of lockdown a year ago. I played one show and it was magnificent. People were so excited. And then obviously we got locked down again. And so from there, people, I could see their spirits were falling and I know ticket sales have been tough in Australia uh, maybe here in New Zealand too uh, it's been a tough go of it but if you're going to live in a city for music well you can't go much better than Melbourne it's just got a great community spirit uh, the great great stations um, in terms of uh, the community stations there triple R PBS etc uh, you can exist in any genre country jazz blues uh, and there's, there's heaps of venues for it. So, yeah, I, I think for me it, it was a no-brainer to, to live there, but mm. I do try to get back to New Zealand as, as much as I can. And you said recently that you've sort of fallen in love a bit, maybe not so much in the winter here, but with, with New Zealand and perhaps maybe mm. some of the smaller venues that you've been at. It's, it's really lovely. I think your, yeah. music, your music fits the South, I have to say, the South Island. It really works. I agree. Well, when I saw you last time, I had a, like a 30-show tour, and I was really putting the feelers out there and trying these new venues that I perhaps wouldn't have done in the past when I just played the main centres. So I tried these different places, like when I was in Alex or Ofer or uh, Luggett, um, and they went really well. And I realised exactly what you said, that the music goes well in these places. And those people are so thankful for you to coming out that they will come back. And they did come back because I went back and played there yeah. just recently in some of those places. So... I did fall back in love with the place. I became aware that that people's people were wanting live music and open minded to live music and so it was really good to get back out there and play again. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will be back and just hope hoping that things stay open here and, and, and mm. alive. <laughs> so do we all keeps going. Oh my goodness, we yeah. we so do. Every, everyone's so 
Oh, yeah, frustrated. And it's good. There's there's a lot of Kiwis on the road at the moment. And as, as I mean, I think we hibernate a lot in, in this country. And as the weather improves, we get longer days. People come out and, uh-huh. yeah, they get more motivated. <laughs> Yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, I've been really lucky. I'm not complaining. In terms of, like, we had some great turnouts at shows, and I was really surprised. Uh, but it, 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 I know that it can be tough out there for some musicians, and I know with the bad weather, people don't don't necessarily want to go out, and I, I don't blame them. But um, <laughs> yeah. hope, hopefully, yes. you know, the, the bigger picture, and people realize that if you leave it long enough, there won't be much left for you in terms of venues or musicians. So if you can go out, please do go out and support live music, local music, uh, if, if you can. The cold won't hurt you. The rain won't kill you, for goodness sakes. No, no. <laughs> and to be honest, like, if you're out there, you know, with these people, most people at venues these days, they're A-OK. Like, even if they have the slightest sniffle, they're not going along. So, mm. you know, most people, I don't hear any coughs in the audience when I'm playing these days. And I think tonight is seated. Uh, so it's a pretty safe environment. Like, you're safer than your supermarket. Come on down. Right. I would say that is 100% true, actually. <laughs> I really agree. Yeah. I agree with you. You're right. It'd be quite nice as an artist not to hear people coughing and spluttering <laughs> at your shows. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, if you've got a cough, don't, that's okay. You can cough. But uh, it's, uh, we've, we've been lucky to have really attentive audiences. And, yeah, I haven't heard too many people coughing. So. <laughs> Oh, good man. Well, um, hey, we've just about come to the end of the line, but we've got a, right. a terrific song to finish with, Grant Lee Buffalo. Yeah, no problem. Tell us about this, Grant Misty Lee. Joe Moon. Yeah. All right. All right. So so this one in particular is uh, is from a... Oh, jeez, all Grant's records are great. But I started listening to Grant when I was just a little kid, I don't know, 12, 13. And it reminds me of driving around with my mates in the car, cranking up Grant Lee Buffalo. Later in life, I heard he was coming to Melbourne. And uh, I think my agent put me forward to tour with him and we got the gig and I, I met Grant uh, as Grant Lee Phillips at that point when had gone solo from his band, Grant Lee Buffalo. So I supported him and on my first record, I covered a track of his called Come to Mama and he got wind of this and he yep. called me up on stage and we played together, which was an amazing, uh, wow. an amazing experience. Right. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And then from there, we kept in touch and I suggested he come back to Australia if he had a good following there. And it kind of surprised him, I think. He was like, oh, you think I can play in Australia? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. Like, you were big here on Triple J, and people know you. And he's like, oh, okay, well, all right. Then if you can think of where I should play. And I put it to my um, agent at the t- premiere, and they uh, booked us up and down the country. We toured Australia. He-